Let me share with you everything you need to know about zinc. You will learn about the benefits of zinc, about signs you might be deficient in zinc, about how much zinc you should get and much much more, so stick around. By the way, my name is Albert. If you're new here and you want to burn fat, live long and feel awesome, start now by subscribing. Now why should you care about zinc? First of all, zinc protects you from a lot of things. It protects you from stress, from oxidative stress, from infections, from free radicals, from oxidation. It prevents you from heavy metal toxicity. It helps you stabilize blood sugars. Thus, it prevents you from diabetes and protects you from food coma. It helps produce pretty much everything that we have in our bodies. So it's very necessary for a growth of any kind including muscle growth and hair growth without zinc you cannot really utilize vitamin a and d and it helps with absorption of other nutrients as well it produces nitric oxide which is like a viagra for our body and much much more zinc deficiency is a big issue and many people suffer from it and if you are one of them you will experience loss of lean body mass poor growth and poor sexual development in children, uh, frequent infections, skin problems, typically it's dry skin or acne, then hair loss or simply poor hair quality and diarrhea. So how much zinc do we need? The RDA for men is 11 milligrams and for women it is 8 milligrams. But how much you should actually get depends on a few factors. Although 11 milligrams for men would be accurate, there are a few things that raise our need for zinc. When we for example masturbate or we have sex, it depletes us men of around 3 milligrams of zinc. So that's why you have low libido when you are deficient. Diarrhea and vomiting also depletes you of zinc. And same for heavy metal toxicity, oxidative stress and inflammation. But these three are accounted into the RDA. Alcoholism, diabetes, celiac disease and a few other diseases also deplete you of zinc. And they will raise your need uh, for around 2 milligrams per day. If you're a big guy or a bodybuilder, you will also need more zinc to keep your weight on. So it's usually around two milligrams as well. And same if you are bulking. It obviously depends on how fast you want to bulk and how much weight that you want to gain. But I would generally go with two more milligrams. If you practice OMAD or any type of time restricted eating, you may want to be aware that you cannot really absorb all the zinc at once. In fact, you can only absorb around 7 milligrams at once and then have to wait for at least 5 hours to consume another 7 milligrams. I am a big fan of OMAD, but when I do OMAD, I consume zinc outside the feeding window. As far as upper limit, zinc isn't really toxic unless you take a ton of it. However, excess zinc can deplete you of a few minerals, such as iron and copper. The biggest concern here comes with copper to zinc ratio because the optimal copper to zinc ratio is around 1 to 8 and if you take a lot of zinc and don't take uh, an 8 that amount of copper that will throw your copper to zinc ratio out of balance. Another big thing when it comes to zinc is the bioavailability of it. There are certain things that uh, either increase or decrease the bioavailability. The biggest inhibitor of zinc absorption is phytic acid. And if you consume a lot of legumes, nuts, seeds and grains, you will need to consume more zinc. I would say that vegans need around 20 to 25 milligrams of zinc at the bare minimum. And some people say that they actually need up to 100 milligrams. Plus, with the sources of phytic acid, I recommend you to either soak, sprout or ferment them because that reduces the phytic acid content. So where do we get zinc from? The number one source by far are oysters. A single oyster already has way more zinc than you need for a day. Same applies to a little bit of liver or bee germ, although bee germ is not very well absorbed. But again, you can only absorb around 7 milligrams of zinc at once, so you cannot really 
bulk up on oysters and expect that to give you more than enough zinc for a month. Meat is another big source of zinc and generally it's that the uh, darker and the leaner the meat the more zinc that it has. Also beef and other red meats are the richest in zinc. But meat generally provides you with 3 to 6 milligrams of zinc per 100 grams. Thus you only need around 2 to 300 grams of meat to meet your RDA. And assuming that meat also has very bioavailable zinc, you shouldn't really be worried about getting enough zinc on a animal heavy diet. The real problem comes with vegetarians and vegans and uh, very low fat dieters. In that case I believe that supplementing with zinc is an absolute necessity. Zinc is extremely heat stable, it does not dissolve in water, it does not dissolve in fat. Any cooking method when it comes to zinc is great. But be aware that if you cook on a copper cookware the copper will leach into the food and you will have a lot of it in your body and that can deplete you of zinc. As far as supplements, there doesn't seem to be such thing as zinc toxicity. Taking 50 plus milligrams at once on an empty stomach might cause you stomach upset and nausea, but uh, these are the only known side effects really. Other than that, zinc supplements appear to be very safe. But again, as we said, there is a proper copper to zinc ratio. And it should be around 1 to 8. And if you supplement with a lot of zinc, it will throw your copper to zinc ratio out of balance unless you eat a lot of liver or you supplement with copper as well. But even if you do have a lot of copper in your body, zinc supplements in very big amounts will still deplete you of iron and other nutrients, which you don't want either. That's why I wouldn't take 15 milligrams of zinc at once. And Again, there is no reason to because you can't absorb that anyway. I myself take 50 milligrams of zinc a day and I encourage everyone who either has a lot of sex or masturbates on a regular basis, every keto person, maybe uh, definitely vegans, uh, vegetarians and anyone on SAD diet to supplement with zinc as well. If you don't fall into any of these categories, you might not need the zinc supplements but still I believe that the pros outweigh the cons. If you know that you have uh, low zinc in your blood or you are deficient in zinc, it's definitely a good idea to spread out the dose. If you were to take 50 milligrams, don't take that 50 milligrams at once because again you cannot absorb it. But take it like uh, take 50 milligrams three times a day rather than 50 milligrams at once. Zinc supplements are best taken on an empty stomach with a glass of water. If that causes you nausea or a stomach upset, take it with a meal that's low in phytic acid. As far as the type of zinc supplement, there are many of them. What you need to know is that they are all absorbed very well except for zinc oxide and zinc piconate. You want to stay away from these two. I would also stay away from zinc sulfide because the sulfide part might cause some side effects for some people. As far as the other types, the difference is not that big but zinc glycinate is in my opinion the best one because you can also reap the benefits of glycine. Now there's only one company that I could find that sells uh, zinc glycinate in the right form and the right amount. It's very cheap too, but if you want it even cheaper, look up zinc citrate on Amazon. That one is also amazing. But use my link so that I get a commission. And if you have any further question about zinc, leave it down below in the comments and I will answer it as soon as possible. You can access the whole Nutrients 101 series for free. Just click somewhere here on the screen. And if you are looking for a specific nutrient, uh, go into the description and you can find links to all the episodes there. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.